Wednesday, the 16th, <coughs> Sunday on Pentecost. We'll here again in Mary's. And the epistle for the sixth Sunday of Pentecost is taken from St. Paul's letter to Romans, chapter 6. Brethren, all we who are baptized in Christ Jesus are baptized in his death. For we are buried together with him by baptism unto death. That as Christ has risen from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we also may, may walk in the of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin may be destroyed, and that we may serve sin no longer. For he that is dead is justified from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall live also together with Christ. Knowing that Christ rising again from the dead, dieth now no more, death shall no more have dominion over him. For in that he died to sin. He died once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. So do you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the Gospel. Then we're going to see Mark chapter 8. At that time, when there was a great multitude with Jesus, and they had nothing to eat, calling his disciples together, he said to them, I have compassion on the multitude, for behold, they have now been with me three days, and have nothing to eat. And if I shall send them away fasting to their homes, they will faint in the way. For some of them came from afar off. And the disciples answered him, From whence can any one of one fill, fill them with beer with bread and wilderness? And he asked them, How many loaves have ye? Who said, Seven. And he commanded the people to sit down on the ground. And taking the seven loaves, giving thanks, he, he, he broke and gave to his disciples to set before the people. And they had a few little fishes. And he blessed them and commanded them to be set before them. And they did eat, and were filled. And they took up that which was left with the fragments, seven baskets, that they had eaten. And, and they, had, they that had eaten were about four thousand, and they sent them away. Thus were the words of the day's holy gospel. And Ambrose tells us the consideration of this miracle of 4,000 a day. Our Lord says in the Gospel, where He taught us how to pray, to give us this day our daily bread. But some pray and they don't receive what they ask for. Others pray and they receive. The word pray means to beg, to ask them, to beg for that which you do not have. Now, when we pray to God, it is not like praying in other places. Generally, a man who works, a man, ha a man has, uh, wants to live, he goes and gets a job, and he works. You go out and work, you go to the workplace, and you do the job that is assigned to you, and you receive the means of, of life. You, go to, you know what you're going to receive. You go to the place of work, you do the job assigned to you, you know what the pay is, you get the pay, you take the pay and you support your family. For the just man, the, 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 the laborer is worthy of his hire. This is how we normally get the things we need. But on this day, notice that there are 4,000 that are fed. This is different from the other time when Lord Jesus Christ feeds 5,000. He feeds 4,000. Does now we wish to be fed? Are we going to be fed according to our just desserts? Are we going to be fed according to our labor? When we go to Jesus Christ, there is a condition. We have to go out in the deserts. We have to go out in the desert. And notice when our Lord, when the 4,000 go out in the desert, they go out in the desert to hear Jesus Christ preach. They go out in the desert. To learn something they can't learn in the city. They go out in the desert because there's something more valuable than the things of this world. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ quickly goes out of the desert. They have to choose. Do we gather provisions or do we follow Jesus Christ in the desert? Do we gather the things we need or do we follow him? And remember, at the end of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ says, there's going to come the Antichrist. There's going to come a great chastisement. There's going to come a great difficulty. And he that is on the roof, let him not go down to collect his coat. He that is in the field, let him not go back to his house. But you immediately go and follow Christ. The normal thing is, I'm getting ready to leave. I will go and collect my things that I need to survive for two days or three days. And then we go. I'll get a job and I'll save up for the trip. And then we go. Our Lord Jesus Christ is now beginning to teach his apostles, this is the way you get things when you are working in this world. And this is the way you get things when you're being a normal man. But I am God. And I demand more. So you have to follow me in the desert without provisions. Now this is not the time of death. It's just follow the Lord in the desert. He is in the desert. He is going into the desert. Why did we go into the desert? Why did they go into the desert? To hear Christ preach the truth. And why did they go immediately? Because Christ just went. And if they waited, they would not find out where he went. They would not be able to catch up with him because he moves quickly. And they had to decide, am I going to follow Jesus in the desert? Am I going to follow our Lord in the desert? Or do I go back and gather my things and then follow him in the desert and try to find out where he went? Later on, Robert tell his apostles, don't you remember when I fed the 4,000? The miracle today. Don't you remember when I fed the 5,000? I fed the 4,000 and I fed the 5,000. I can take care of you in any circumstance, in any situation. Now they have fed the 4,000. I mean, the 4,000 followed in the desert. And our Lord said, behold, they followed me in the desert. How could I send them home when they followed me and stayed with me two days in the desert? And if they go home, they shall faint in the way. And then one of the apostles, as well as the wise men standing around, says, How can we fill them, feed them in this wilderness? How can we feed them in this wilderness? Here St. Ambrose tells us, As we travel through life, the Lord God gives us small tests. He gives us little tests, and little tests, and little tests. Now the apostles failed in many ways. You know that when Holy Thursday night came, they ran away as cowards. But and they they, they did not they did not have the strength to stay with Christ. And they denied him when Good Friday morning came. But he taught them this. If you are with me, even if you are in the wilderness, if you are in the desert, you can be sustained. And what is the great question? Who shall feed us in this wilderness? Who is going to feed us in this wilderness? We are fed by God. We are not fed by our labors. We aren't fed by our warriors. We are fed by God. Give us this day our daily bread is the prayer that we say in our Father that he taught us. Give us this day our daily bread. And what is the condition of being given this daily bread? One condition is mentioned in the Our Father, which is forgive us, as, again, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. There are conditions of the heart. Consider this, St. Augustine. The king is going to give his gifts. He's going to give his gifts to the man that is proud and obnoxious, or he's going to give his gift to the humble. He's not going to give his gift to the proud because he is angry at the proud and doesn't like the way they carry themselves. They have confidence in themselves. But he freely gives to the humble. What are the conditions of this humanity? One of them is mentioned in the Our Father, that they forgive the neighbor. We have to forgive if we wish to be fed our daily bread. 
but this is only one half. <clears throat> we have to recognize that our daily bread, our sustenance, comes from God and is going to be given to those that are ready to follow Him over the stuff. How are we going to survive in the deserts? Every day when the Jews were 40 years in the desert, quail came, enough for them to eat for one day. And every day in the desert, manna came, enough for them to eat for one day. And none of them starved. But what was the condition of getting the manna? For there were millions of people, or at least hundreds of thousands of people in the desert. But they did not get manna. And there were many in the desert, and they didn't get quail to eat. Why is it that the Jews got manna and they got quail? That uh, they could live in the desert for 40 years. They could live in the wilderness for 40 years. Because their daily bread, not just, not just a supernatural bread of, of blessed sacrament, their daily sustenance, their physical daily sustenance came from heaven because they followed Moses. Came from heaven because they followed God. And they lived in the desert for 40 years without stocking up. <laughs> now the same God that made it possible for the Jews to live for 40 years in the desert without stocking up, He can sustain us in the deserts. Remember the woman of Sarepta? There were three years of a fast, three years of the famine, and she was about to die of starvation. And the prophet Elias came to her house Woman, I am hungry. And she said, I have only one last bowl of porridge remaining. I only have one last bowl of porridge remaining. And I was going to eat it, and my son eat it, and then we were going to lie down and die. And Elias said to her, I am a prophet of God. Give me first to eat, and then take to eat yourself. And so she cut the, the bowl of porridge and she gave it first to eat to Elias. And then she ate herself. You see this happen many times throughout history. For instance, even recently, in the last couple of years, one of the members of the uh, connected, connected with us, not members of the parish, not uh, actually direct Catholics, but people directly and corrected with the church, they stole the money from the church. And they stole the money that they're going to sustain. It was, should have been given for, the, for not directly to the church, but for the poor. And it was in the will to be given for the poor. And the family took the money in order to sustain their business. And it was more than enough money to sustain their business. <clears throat> and the business collapsed. And the business failed. And now they are in danger of being in the streets. They have lost their business. And this has happened so many times. Try to build on ill-gotten goods, and the kingdom that's built on ill-gotten goods collapses even in this life. In this feeding of the 4,000, when our Lord Jesus Christ feeds the 5,000, he promises the blessed sacrament. He says, eat my flesh and drink my blood. They are scandalized at him, and they walk away. When he feeds the 4,000, it is a preparation for later on when he will feed the 5,000. And he tells his apostles, we have gone in the desert. I brought them in the desert. And they said, you brought them in the desert. Now you're sending them back home. And there is no way to provide for them in the desert. What have you? Well, we have seven loaves and a few fishes. So they have a few loaves and a few fishes. Give them to the disciples. Here it is made clear that our obligation to give to God, to give to the church, and to give to the poor remains at all times in life, whether we are out of the desert or we are in the desert. St. Ambrose says they went into the desert and they weren't properly prepared. They didn't store up. And here we find that Jesus Christ speaks of two different preparations. He says there was a man who did not prepare for the winter, therefore he starves. But when it comes to the desert, you don't prepare. 
But why is it that you should prepare to store things up for the winter while you shouldn't prepare for the desert? The reason is because we follow Christ, and our Lord Jesus Christ is going to tell us sometimes, you're going to need to follow me in the desert. Now this has happened so many times in history. This is the beginning of persecution. The time is going to come when they say, you must choose. Are you going to follow Jesus Christ in the desert? Or are you going to stay in the place where there is food, where there is sustenance, where you can sustain yourself? Because if you don't take the vaccine, which has aborted fetuses in it, and if you don't do some other immoral thing, you won't be able to keep your job. You won't be able to keep your house. You will not be able to stay alive in this world. You won't be able to do it. And we don't follow Christ in the desert. Be like the German priest in World War II, who was in the German army as a, as a deacon. And he said he felt the necessity to follow Christ. In one time, the Germans were losing the war. The Americans were attacking. And they were told to, to one man had to volunteer to attack the American positions and see where they were. And no one wanted to volunteer. They were losing the war anyway. We'll just stay here, wait for them to come, and then maybe we can surrender. But we're not going to, no one wanted to volunteer. You know, I will go out and check out the American mm -hmm. positions. So they ran out to check the positions. While they ran out, there came an American mortar fire. There came in a bombardment, and everyone that remained behind was killed. He then went to go attack Patton's army. Patton's army never stopped in the battle. When he arrived in the American positions, they weren't there. They had continued to advance, and therefore he was perfectly safe. Had he stayed in the safe place, he would be dead. But he, would, he volunteered and he went straight to battle, knowing that he would die. Instead of dying, he lived. Those who remained safe, they were all dead. And St. Ambrose says, consider the feeding of the 5,000, the 4,000. Here we consider the material things of this life. In the feeding of the 5,000, we consider the divine things. Our Lord Jesus Christ feeds the 4,000 in the desert. Those who did not go out of the desert, their food was not multiplied, and they did not see this miracle. God will often give us little tests. He will ask us, are you ready to follow me? How did you get food? How did you support your family? How did you, today, how did you get a house? How did you get a job? How did you receive the things that you have in order to sustain your family? It is because of me. It is because God gave it to you. You say it every day. Our Father who art in heaven, give us this daily, our daily bread. The daily bread comes from God. Every now and then, God will give a small test. Do you have confidence in your work? Do you have confidence in your job? Do you have confidence in your security of your house? Or do you have confidence in me? Now I'm asking you, today I've decided to go in the desert, and you don't have time to gather your things. You don't have time to protect your home. You'll have to follow me in the desert. Now those that followed Jesus Christ into the desert, they lived. They were fed. These tests are given before the final test. One day they will come and say to you, you must receive the mark of the beast. And on that day, you either are already the friend of God, and you will say no. Or well, you are already the enemy of God, and you will say yes. All that's going to happen on that day is it will be revealed where our souls already are. It's like when you go into the doctor to receive a test for cancer, to receive a test for heart disease, to receive a test for any kind of sickness. All the test does is, is there cancer in your body now? Results came back, and it came out negative. You don't have cancer in your body. The results came back and it's positive. You do have cancer in your body. Now, in order to Christ says, you must follow me in the desert 
even without proper preparation, even without the proper things. And our Lord also said, when he said, do you remember when I fed the 4,000? Do you remember when I fed the 5,000? Do you remember when I sent you from town to town and I never gave you money and I never gave you things? Did you ever find that you were one? Did you ever find that you were starving? Did you ever find there was nothing there that you needed? And they said, yes, Lord, everything we needed was there. The Father will provide. And what did he say in the very beginning at the Sermon on the Mount? The Heavenly Father watches over the lilies of the field. They neither sow nor reap nor gather to barns, and yet the Heavenly Father watches over every one of them. So too it shall be. And you do as we look back over our lives, whenever the time of necessity comes, there are many difficulties, there are many challenges. And yet, when the time of necessity comes, if we seek first the kingdom of God and his justice, as he said during the Sermon on the Mount, and we really and truly seek first God and his justice, all other things are added beside. Whenever we choose things, job, position, our place in society, over the law of God, always things turn bad. This is now happening in the world around us. We have put confidence in our bank accounts. We have put confidence in the banks. Now, as Bishop Williamson calls them, the banksters are now wrapping us up in a web and they are making us slaves. We have had confidence in the doctors and confidence in modern medicine and confidence in modern science and confidence in modern technology. And now modern technology is watching over us every moment and making us into slaves. And modern science is destroying us through, uh, through, the, through unhealthy uh, foods and Monsanto Corporation and through all kinds of disastrous vaccines and sickness being given to men. We had confidence in all these things because these things will take care of us. And when we put this confidence over God, so what happens? Just naturally, Bishop Sheen says, sickness, misery, death is just the normal, natural consequence of sin. It's just what happens when you choose anything over God. And also, because we've done this, God is angry and he punishes us to hell. But the normal, natural consequence of sin is misery, destruction, separation, death in this life. But the just man lives by faith, and the just man follows Christ into the desert, and God takes care of him. God will take care of the family. You were born in poverty, you, had, you got married in poverty, and you now got 14 kids, and you're still in poverty. And if you get thrown out of your house, you'll be still in poverty. But God will make sure that you are that each one of the children and the mommy and the daddy are taken care of if they follow Jesus Christ in the deserts. One of the desert tests is going to be given to us now. It's already happened to our ancestors so many times. So many times they've been driven from their villages. So many times they've been driven from their homes. So many times they've had to choose God over money. And here I'm not talking about God over stealing money or God over a direct mortal sin, but God over the ordinary things that God intends us to have in life. God intends a man to have a job. He intends him to have a bank account. He intends him to save up and try to support his family as long as he doesn't get too much immersed in material things. God intends and wants these things to happen. But, from time to time, he will say, all right, are you ready to follow me in the desert? And St. Ambrose says, these 4,000 saw a miracle, and the others did not see a miracle. These 4,000 went home refreshed, and the others were not refreshed, because they chose to follow Christ in the desert rather than being materially prepared. And this is the beginning of the supernatural life. Later on, Christ will feed more people in the desert. He'll feed 5,000. Later on, he will make it possible for St. Paul and other apostles like him 
not only to be fed, but to escape from the hands of the enemy. They will, they will try to put him to death. He'll escape over the wall. Just like the three spies inside the city of Jericho, God did not want them to die. And they were saved by the prostitutes. And they were let down over the wall, and they were not harmed. If we seek our Lord Jesus Christ and go into the desert, when he goes to the desert, we shall not be abandoned in material things. We shall not be abandoned. And furthermore, if we follow Christ in the desert, if we don't follow Christ in the desert, and we choose the material things over him, when the great test comes, we are guaranteed to fail, not because we will fail when the soldiers come to the door, but because we have already failed. We've already chosen things over God. And now is the time in these small tests that we must decide to choose God over things. In Mexico in the 1930s, Every bishop, except for the, uh, the Bishop Raphael, the geezer, they gave up the faith immediately. They turned themselves over to the communists immediately. Only one bishop did not. They all said the Latin Mass. They were all Catholic bishops. They were all traditional. But they gave in immediately because what happened? Caius said to them, I will let you keep your rectories. You just don't support this crusade against masonry. You don't crusade to support the crusade against Caius. And there's a crusading of the Catholic faith in Mexico. And the Catholic bishop said, no, no problem. We have no problem. You let us stay in our rectories. And some bishop said, I'm staying in my rectory and I'm reserving my church because it's an historical church. And it's a historical rectory, and I've got to save it for the next generation. I don't like what Caius had to say, but I've got responsibilities. And they did not become saints, they did not become martyrs, and they were the chief ones responsible for the failure of the Cristero Rebellion, <coughs> and the preservation of the faith. And they were the chief ones responsible for the most martyrs that happened. Had the bishops stood up, <coughs> and protected the rights of God rather than their rectories, then Masonry would have failed in Mexico. But the Malays, they, did, they did not stand up. The same was true in England 500 years ago. It was the bishops who said, we don't like Henry VIII. We don't agree with his new religion. But he said, if we don't obey him and we don't follow him, we will lose our rectories. We will lose our churches. We will be thrown into the streets. Only one bishop, St. John Fisher, said no. Those other bishops all lost the faith. We are now in a time, we are approaching a time like the Mexicans in 1926, and we're approaching a time like the English in 1526. We must be realized we are approaching this time again. And they are going to say to us, are you ready to keep your faith or keep your job? Are you ready to follow Jesus Christ into a desert? How can you be sustained in the wilderness? How can you be sustained in the wilderness? And the apostles asked the question too. How can we get food in the wilderness? But Christ shall sustain in the wilderness. And furthermore, those that don't go to the wilderness, they shall not escape the judgments. They shall also be in a state of sorrow, and they shall also struggle and die. Those who do not go in the wilderness. So God will give us a test, St. Ambrose talks about today. Are we ready to follow Christ into the wilderness? Believing that as he took care of the lilies of the field, who neither sow nor reap, he'll also take care of us whom he loves more. As he took care of the Jews in the desert for 40 years, every day they got manna, and every day they got quail, and every day they ate their fill, and no one was hungry for 40 years. Why? Because they followed Christ. And he says in the prayer that he taught us in the New Testament, give us this day our daily bread. We ask the Father to give us our daily bread. We all worry about our daily bread. Each one of us worries about our daily bread. 
And yet, if we follow Christ first, and we follow the faith first, and we really don't want to give up our jobs, we don't want to be thrown out of our rectories, we don't want to be threatened with, with, with the, the loss of all things we have, and normally we should not be. But we are headed into a time where this is going to be the test. <coughs> and we must understand, in the feeding of the 4,000, that God will take care not only of our supernatural well-being. He knows He made us flesh. It is He who said, The Lord knows you have need of these things. He made us needing clothing. He made the first set of clothes for Adam and Eve. He knows that we need sustenance. He made sure there was food in the Garden of Paradise. He knows we need a place to sleep. He knows we need to be, we need, we need to be not abandoned. He knows we need friends to take care of us and help us, and He will provide all these things. It was a bird that brought food every day. A raven brought food every day to Elias. He was praying before God, and a raven brought him food every day during the famine. We are headed into a kind of famine that will not only be spiritual, but may also be material in the next years to come. To those who seek first the kingdom of God and His justice, those who are ready to give up the job and the things of this world in order to stay with God, when they go in the wilderness, they shall say, How can you find food in the wilderness? And yet we will find food, we will find sustenance, we will find shelter, we shall not starve in the crisis that is upon us already, and they will continue. Look what happened to our Holy Church materially. They left behind God in Vatican II. They no longer follow God in Vatican II. They decided to make it a religion of man. And what happened? The donations stopped. The churches closed. The schools closed. All over the world, the church has lost its glory and its property. It has lost its, its place before man. And so it is that, that, that God will not just simply give us a spiritual punishment when we abandon Him. There shall also be a material punishment. And Bishop Zine says, remember about this material punishment. It's not even a punishment of God. It's the natural, normal consequence of sin. When a man decides to be a drunkard, God does not make him have liver disease. God doesn't make him have mental problems. God doesn't make him have bad breath. God doesn't make him lose all his friends. God doesn't make him make bad decisions. God doesn't take away his use of reason. His choice to drink does. And it's a natural consequence of drink and a natural consequence of drugs that these wicked things happen. And it's a natural consequence of adultery and a natural consequence of fornication, a natural consequence of broken marriages, a natural consequence of abortion, a natural consequence of birth control, that we be alone, abandoned, and in despair. That's a natural consequence of greed, that we lose all things we have, because a man stronger than us comes and takes our stuff. It's a natural consequence of murder, that we find ourselves murdered by someone whom we had unjustly killed. Every single sin is a natural consequence that destroys us. Give us this day our daily bread, and follow Christ into the desert. Choose God over the things of this world. And this test is going to be given to us. We don't know if we're going to pass, we're so afraid. I cannot guarantee that I shall pass the test. You cannot guarantee you shall pass the test. We must ask the grace of God and the protection of Our Lady that when the test comes and they tell us, you must choose either to keep your job, you must choose to keep your health, you must choose to keep your position in society, you must choose to follow our rules and regulations, or you will lose your family, you will lose your house, you will lose your, your possessions, or you must choose to follow Christ in the desert. If we follow Christ in the desert, we shall not starve. If we follow the devil and fulfill his requirements, he shall change them, and he shall change them, and he shall change them, until we are fully chained and dead and lose everything anyway. In any case, St. Ambrose says, let us be willing to follow Christ in the desert, and he will feed us as he fed the 4,000. Who's going to bless you all? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.